civil danger warning. A disaster of unknown type has occurred. Number of casualties are not yet known. Outbreak of a highly contagious virus. Normal programming has been suspended. Stay calm and stay indoors. Gary. Gary, you got the generator going yet? This is not a test. Have you got the generator going yet? You have, good man. We're on, we're on. Okay. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. We've salvaged enough fuel to get our generator running for around half an hour, so we'll be bringing you government-approved news and stories from Free Yorkshire, the mightiest of the many new nation-states that, several decades ago, emerged from the troubled era of early 21st century Britain. My name, of course, is Lloyd Becklesnip, and we have a packed show for you tonight. Coming up soon is the first part in a short series of reports that will reveal how our food gets from farm to table. We'll be meeting farm worker Arl Pushpin, who'll be letting us in on secrets such as this. I'll get dressed up as a giant uh, swamp mongrel, and for about an hour or two, I will chase the children of the village around the bog. (laughs) We lose a few, of course, but it's all good fun. And later we'll be hearing from none other than Trevor Skylark, the new host of Coasting It, and he'll be sharing some of his adventures from his journey around the shores of Britain. There's been a few sightings um, saying that a raven-haired jellyfish person matching Clyde's description has been seen, uh, but so far we've not had any communication from Clyde at all, so I, I assume he's either one of them now or he's met his doom. But first, here's the recycling bin scheduled for next week. Recycling schedule. Recycling schedule. Monday, paper and plastic. Tuesday, metal and wood. Wednesday, used bandages and unrequired bodily fluids. Thursday, vomit. Friday, discarded toes and fingers. Saturday, any pets that are glowing above five lumens. And on Sunday, it's class. Recycling schedule. Recycling schedule. Later, we'll be letting you know the latest updates to this weekend's shopping and travel permit permutations. But first, let's get started with our exciting new series, From Farm to Table. I travel deep into the beautiful valleys of this great land of Yorkshire to meet Arl Pushpin, a farm worker who is tilling the soil and providing sustenance for the good people of Yorkshire. Here is what happened when I caught up with him on the farm. The glorious republic of Yorkshire radio show. I'm here today with farm worker Arl Pushpin, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how the produce gets from his farm to our table. Arl, welcome to the show. Thank you, Lloyd. Pleasure to be here. Arl, you've got quite a few acres of farm here. What kind of produce are you specialising in? Well, we primarily deal in the swamp mongrel, which, mm. as you know, has become one of the staple foods of Yorkshire in the, in the recent times, because... There's so much swampland out there, so much boggy marsh, which my family has been... We've been in bogs for a long time. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect place for the mongrel to grow. But they're quite a tricky little critter to domesticate. How did you first go about taming this this wild creature? Well, that all goes back to my father, who was walking across the bogland one evening, because that is the time when they're most docile. So he had his bog shoes on so he could walk the bog. Well, interesting point. He had his bog shoes, his bog waders, his bog briefs and his bog hat. Oh, a bogmeister. Never wear a shirt when wrangling these beasts. For some reason, it infuriates them. They will go for a shirt. Any sort of shirt? We're talking check, plain? Basically, the hairier you can be, the calmer they will be. So if you were to come onto this field or this bog with a wax chest, regardless of whether a shirt or not, they will go for you. The the hair, for some reason, calms them and it subdues them. And your father was a particularly hairy man, was he? He was a suit. Often people thought he was wearing a shirt when he wasn't. 
A hair shirt. Exactly. Nice. Although he wasn't being punished for religious crime. As I say, he was walking through the bog at night and quite simply, he stepped on one. Now, this was a loose one. As you can tell, they're usually in their nests, in their mounds under the ground. Mm -hmm. He stood on this loose one. It let out a yelp, but it wasn't a, it was a, a wounded yelp. This brought forth the other members of the pack and one by one, he stood on them. And now we have our annual stompings. Yes, it's become part of the local tradition. We have the uh, Swamp Mongrel Festival, at which I believe you play a, a, a series of Swamp Mongols. That's right, it's tremendous fun. I'll get dressed up as a giant uh, Swamp Mongrel, and for about an hour or two, I will chase the children of the village around the bog. <laughs> we lose a few, of course, but it's all good fun. Only the weak ones. Exactly, we're purifying the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And then we stomp, we squish, and we get rid of these uh, these mongrel creatures, all for the harvest and for the good of the county, of course. And so you've developed the swamp mongrel into the, the delicacy we know today, because obviously the original swamp mongrel recipes were famous for not being the tastiest, but you've managed to modify the recipes over the years in order to make them more palatable. What were some of your first breakthroughs on this direction? What we did was we worked with local chefs uh, to bring the swamp mongrel sausage, the swamp mongrel casserole, mm -hmm. and my personal favourite, the swamp mongrel steak au gratin. We are so familiar with the swamp mongrel steak au gratin. Although the, the gratin isn't the traditional French dressing, it's actually a disused farm feed that happens to have the brand name Gratin. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what, what's actually in that farm feed? We get the Gratins from um, Mackerel Gratin, who had the farm just a, a few uh, metres down the road there, and we don't ask him. Sorry, yards down the road. I'm not gonna report your use of metres this time, but if you do mention it again, I will have to bring in the measurement authorities. Perhaps a, a link of swamp mongrel sausages would make this all disappear. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I've done. completely forgotten what it was you just said there. You're a good lad. Uh, yes, we get them from the Grattans, uh, the, a, a family a few yards down the, down the way there. Uh, and we don't ask them, and they don't ask us. Everybody wins. Harold, I believe as a special treat for us today, you're gonna show me how to stamp on a, on a swamp mongrel. And so, that very same evening, Harold took me out hunting to the nearest Swamp Mongrel Valley. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. So, first of all, make sure to put on all your gear and, most importantly, what do we lose? Our shirt. That's absolutely right. So, put on your boots there, we'll just put those on. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your waders. Have you got a size four? No. Uh, I tell you what, we'll get you a size eight and cut it in half. Sounds good to me. Obviously now you can hear the owls and this is the perfect time. What we've got to look for is the stray wanderer. Now these are usually the younger ones who don't know to not go out at night. Mm -hmm. So uh, keep your eye open for any movement at all. If you hear anything, just point out, but try and keep your voice low, okay? Okay. All right. Well, we're just pushing our way through some reeds in the swamp now. Can you hear that scuttling? Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. You've got an ear for it. Now just look over there. You can see his purple eyes and pink nose. They, they slightly glowing. It's yeah. quite eerie. Do you know how you can tell that's a male? No. The large penis. Ah, yes. You can see the trail. Absolutely right. So I'm actually going to come round here. He'll follow my noise, which means you can come up behind him and go straight for the neck with the boot heel, okay? Okay, I'll use the one with the stiletto, was that right? That's right, use your stiletto heel, the other one's for balance. Use the stiletto to kill. Okay, okay I'm gonna come round now. Ready? In three, two, one. Oh, that's absolutely fantastic. Oh, I got him first time, didn't you? Now listen, he's giving up that dying yelp. You know what that means? More of them. They're coming. Okay, get ready. I'm going to join you now. Just be ready and stamp as you see their faces. There's, I can see quite the swarm. There's quite the number coming over that hill. Oh, no, there is no hill. That is just them. 
I know that it's quite terrifying. In fact, no, that is an unusual amount. I'll be honest with you, that's more than I was expecting. We might be better coming back tomorrow night. But let's run. OK, okay Lloyd? Let's, let's run. Let's run. Let's run. Running. Let's run. Uh, OK. I'm going. Oh, no, my shirt. I forgot my shirt. Oh, no, you're still wearing your shirt. <laughs> what were you thinking, Lloyd? <laughs> what, what did I tell you? Yeah! The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. Unfortunately, Harold did not make it out of that field alive, and I'd like to dedicate the rest of this episode to the memory of that sweetly pungent man. Our thoughts and prayers are obviously with Harold's family, especially his wife Cecile. Cecile, I'm so sorry for your loss. I can't imagine the pain and suffering that you're going through. I'd just like you to know that myself and everyone here at the Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio are thinking of you. Although, not to worry, as of course you'll be assigned a new husband soon anyway, once your allotted two-week grieving period has expired. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. And I'm delighted, excited, and just altogether piffilated to let you know that we're now going to talk to none other than Trevor Skylark. Trevor has a long and distinguished career in broadcasting, and he is now the latest presenter on everyone's favourite travelogue programme, Coasting It. The series that has been taking us around the beautiful, mysterious, and let's face it, often deadly shoreline of the island we live on. I managed to get him on the line when he was between adventures, and this is what he had to say. We have with us Trevor Skylark, the presenter of Coasting It, and he is uh, well into his his latest trip. So, uh, Trevor. Hello, hello, yes. How is it all going on the coast? I'm uh, I'm enjoying myself so far. Now, obviously, as as fans of Coasting It will know, you're the the, the latest presenter. Of... I am the third presenter of uh, of this program. The other two presenters, I mean, there's been rumours, there's been speculation what happened to them, but I can actually tell you. Um, oh really? We've got an exclusive. Yes, I can reveal what happened. So obviously everybody remembers uh, Clyde uh, Bellwether. Clyde made it as far as uh, Blackpool. Yes, having having survived the wilds of Scotland. He was in the wild there. He, he met many many foe who were uh, trying to get the his the better of him, but uh, well, uh, trying to make him into a kilt. Basically. Yes, absolutely. That's how yes. around the bush. That's mm. what they do. Mm-hmm. They get mm-hmm. you. They will make you into a kilt. They will. They'll just kilt you right up, as they call it there. Um, but so Clyde made it to Blackpool. But this is where he let his guard down. He thought, "I'm quite safe here. We've got a bit of a bit of beach." And this is where, he, unfortunately, Clyde did let his guard down, and the jellyfish people of Blackpool just took him. The, the jellyfish. So the, the rumors are true. They are true. We actually have footage of Clyde on his last. Sorry, I get a very emotional speaking about it. I knew Clyde very well. Mm. Um, you you can actually see that on the footage that the, a jellyfish person grabs Clyde and takes him into the into the sea. And have we heard from him? Has there been any word? What's there, happened? There's been a few sightings um, saying that a raven-haired jellyfish person matching Clyde's description has been seen. Uh, but so far we've not had any communication from Clyde at all. So I... I assume he's either one of them now or he's met his doom. But there, there's a possibility that Clyde has merged with the with the jellyfish people and is now... Merged? I mean, Clyde, he, he won't mind me saying this, he, he'd, he'd probably like the term adapt. He, he's adapted to their culture. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's what Clyde was known for. He'd go into these places and he's... He'd adapt himself. He was a, quite a chameleon. Well, yes, he was a, a Pulitzer-winning war correspondent. There is rumours of him being so successful in the Taliban that he ended up leading them. Yes, sometimes Clyde did get uh, in too deep to the point where he would take over. So there is a possibility that he's not gone. He's just gone undercover. Possibly, yes. We could, yes. Be, we could be hearing from him. At some point in the future. Maybe we will. Point. Maybe we will come and share his knowledge. But until then, we have to just plod on. It's what he would want to do. He always said, Clyde always said, you've got to go in and do your job. Yes. And I'll never forget those words from Clyde. He was lovely, lovely man. And then, um, of course, Sally Lupp. Sally Lupp. This is chalk and cheese, isn't it? Sally Lupp. 
Mm. So we, we've got this young journalist, uh, go-getter, mm -hmm. thinking she can take on the world. Very um, young journalist. Some people say... Too putting, young. Putting a 16-year-old into that kind of position was I mean, just she irresponsible. Was, she was fresh. Some people see that as, oh, she's a go-getter. She'll go out and get stories that are uh, as more, how should we say, advanced journalists couldn't handle. But um, then she, she made it, what did she do? Liverpool, Southport. She did this, got as far as Colwyn Bay. Not very far, in my opinion. Mm. Thought she could take on the world. And then all of a sudden, this mist comes in. She disappears. The Colwyn Bay Mist. The Colwyn Bay Mist, yes. I mean, I laugh at this because she she thought she knew it all. She didn't listen to any of the regulations, any of the advice. We, She was told the, the, the Colwyn Bay Mist will come in. Yes. And she said, I don't need to I don't need to listen to you. I can deal with mist. I'm a journalist. And I mean, it rhymes. She, well, just, she, she had that knack of she did, yes. making stuff uh, digestible. And, and, mm -hmm. and her rhyming mm -hmm. reports were, were very popular. On... They, were, they were. They were popular. But she thought she could do it all. And then she's lost in the mist. And yes. all we had was a, a pair of shoes. The mist, of course, mm -hmm. rumoured to have stemmed from... The heat wave of 31 that vaporized all the seagull droppings in, in Wales. There was an intense localized heat wave. Yes. And this uh, evaporated everything. And, and since then, there's been this mist that rolls around the coast on a seven day cycle, I believe it Absolutely, is. Absolutely, yes. And, and Sally was told about this, but she just. She just went in there anyway, thinking she could do it all. Um, I mean, if you listen, when the mist is there, if you do listen, you can hear the faint calls of gulls. The spirit of the gulls lives yes. on within the mist. That's quite tragic. So you, step, well, I don't think you stepped literally into your shoes, did you? You look like a... No, 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 I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go there, not with Sally. I mean, um, the shoes are on, uh, on display now in uh, Colwyn Bay. Uh, as another victim of the mist. A warning, um, a warning. A warning, yes, yes. What kind of numbers have the mist claimed now? Oh, I mean, it's in, it's in the 10,000s. I mean, the only thing that tops that really is the pensioner revolution of New Bournemouth. And obviously, with the new zombie outbreak, people are reminded. There's been another zombie outbreak. There's in... been another zombie outbreak. I mean, I'm talking to you now in this hotel. We are barricaded in. I, I'm... I'm quite calm under pressure myself. You can't mm. sense I'm actually terrified right now. Okay. Can you describe the scene to us? It's awful out there. Um, because they are zombie pensioners, there's not quite a, a, a sense of panic, what you'd expect from a normal zombie outbreak. They are quite slow, slower than your normal zombie. Okay, so it's kind of like an exponential thing. You take the, the speed of a zombie mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and basically divide it by the speed of a pensioner. Yes, And you've got yes. some sort of... You probably move at the the, the rate of a fast-growing plant, maybe? Yes, absolutely. But having said that, some of them, you do need to keep your wits about you. So with the, the zombies, if you fell asleep within 30 yards of one, you would be in danger? Of course. I mean, and you, if you go to the pensioner hotspots, you know, uh, the promenade, for okay. example. Oh, they congregate more there. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't put yourself in a situation where there's going to be a pensioner. I mean, a bingo hall, straight away is right out. I would not. Do no. not go in there. Okay. And if you've got any worthers on you, get rid of them immediately. They'll they'll, sm they'll smell them. Okay. They've yeah, got yeah. a high, heightened smell for worthers now. Just be careful out there. That's what you've got to do. I mean, I, I saw one chap down here and uh, he, he was taken. Just sat on a bench and next thing you know, 20 pensioner zombies around him. Was he feeding the birds? He was. Ah. He was. So just avoid... All pensioner activities, mm -hmm, no mm -hmm. bingo, no worthers, no feeding the birds, and no outdated racism. Absolutely, yes. They will, they'll swarm you, okay. and you'll be gone. That's good to know. The Glorious Free Republic of Yorkshire Radio Show. And we'll be hearing more from that interview with Trevor in just a moment. But first, here's a word from our sponsor. Confused about which permits to buy when? Unsure what concessions apply to your permit needs? Fretting over the fact that one simple spelling mistake in your application could lead to an immediate trip in a black van followed by 10 years in the nearest salt marsh? Then fret no more. 
because the practically perfect perforated permit pinwheel is here. Sent to you over 6 weeks, this 12 part easy to assemble apparatus will make your permit panic perish as you simply line up the wheels denoting your height, age, domicile grade, number of teeth and predicted death date to reveal your permits for the current 8.5 day cycle. All this can be yours for 7 easy payments of $9.99. Any payment can be replaced with either a cat's jaw or a child's finger. Please ensure the child is under 5 and that the fingernail is clean. Just send your form and payment to P.O. Box 23023 along with a vial of saliva or blood as this offer is not available to the infected. The practically perfect perforated permit pinwheel Get yours today! Seriously, this item has just been designated by the government as part of your required item citizen pack, so get yours today! And now, back to our interview with the one and only Trevor Skylark. So you've, you've made it all the way from Colwyn Bay. Of course you've been travelling through Wales, which mm -hmm. is part owned by Amazon now as, a, as yes. an open air uh, warehouse mm -hmm. so you've got the drones to dodge yes drone dodging i mean we all know the survival guides if you hear a drone duck and cover mm -hmm. play dead right the drone will not take you yes whatever you do i mean if you've got any labels on you right yes so cut all labels off all labels everybody knows this yeah, i yes. mean cut your labels off your mm -hmm. clothes i mean what are you playing at you're dicing with death it'll scan you and take you well we've had reports of the children there's this new craze for uh, it's kind of drone joyriding. Oh dear, yes, I've heard about this. I've 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 come across a couple of cases of this as well. Yes, what they do apparently, hmm. they label themselves up, mm -hmm. take a joyride on the drone, and then pull the label. But some of these kids are going at great heights. Yes, the new models can get up to 10,000 feet. Of so course they can. I what? mean, this is dangerous. They do have the technology now as well to dissolve you. Literally. Literally dissolve no, you. Nothing if, left. If, if there's an er error in the parcel grabbing, they'll dissolve you. So these kids are dicing with death. So you got through Wales. Mm -hmm. What's next on the agenda? You'll be going along to Southampton? Yes, uh, Southampton is the next destination. I'm not expecting to have too much trouble there. Right, yes. Um, as we know, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a battlefield itself. Mm -hmm. um, or it used to be until... Everyone was wiped out. Yes, it's the ruins of, of Southampton. So I'll have a good look around there and see what I can uh, conjure up. But hopefully, hopefully I've got my wits about me to not get replaced. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Watch out for the Southampton crab people. Again, rumours. Do we know they exist? I'd love to see one. Yes. I would love to see one. Well, if you can get it on camera, I think the, the key is... Don't get beside one of them, because they move sideways at a hell of a rate. Absolutely. Forward and backwards, not so much. Yes. But don't yes. get beside one. But again, Clyde and Sally would probably be in there, and they'd probably come a cropper, you know, mm. but not me. Not me. Well, we look forward to, to seeing the exciting next episode of uh, Coasting It. Thank you very much for your update, Trevor. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for speaking to me today. Fascinating stuff. I'm sure you'll agree. It's nearly time to pay a quick visit to the sports desk, but before we do, let's find out what other programmes and podcasts are available on the Free Yorkshire Network. This is a Yorkshire Tell prepaid cons link from Tracy Milken, an inmate at Skelman for Parking Control. From the Free Yorkshire Network. And W E A K T L C Q R N P T Skelmanthorpe comes seriously. One story told week by week. Hi, I'm Sarah Reassuring, and I'd like to invite you on a journey. You may have thought by now that every possible true crime case had already been endlessly raked over by a seemingly infinite number of podcasts. But you'd be wrong. Over the next few months and just 37 three hour long episodes, I'll be detailing the story of Tracy Milken, who was convicted of two parking infringements on the 13th of March, 15 years ago. She, however, still says that she is innocent. I will be going into great depth the very many twists and turns in this case in such a way that you'll keep changing your mind about whether you believe her or not, an almost infuriating amount of times. 
but you'll stick with it because you love the calming sound of my voice so much that you'd be happy to hear me read the phone directory just so long as I said, huh, interesting, every now and again. Seriously, starts this Friday and will end when the stars fall from the sky. I, for one, can't wait for that one and will be sure to start it once I listen to the 13,378 other podcasts I currently have on my listening device. Okay, I can see the generator starting to sputter a bit, so this show is almost over. But if we're quick, we can just squeeze in a visit to the sports desk with Dale Wolf. And it's time to get your posh frocks on because it's that time of year again. It's time for La Cruffs. That's right, Lloyd. My monocle is frosty and ready for this. This what? weekend at the Harrogate Centre for Small Business and Enterprise, it is La Cruffs, the annual tradition that has kept Yorkshire together for years. The fine tradition. We can all remember our first La Cruffs meet. Uh, obviously, you're not allowed there under the age of eight, lest you get eaten. But once you do go, you get your nice red jacket on. It's nicely firmly stuck arched and mm. pressed and you go along to La Cruffs and you take your jacket off and it ceremonially gets torn to shreds in front of your crying, crying eyes. I remember the first time my red jacket got ripped up at the grand old age of nine. Let me tell you, that was one heck of a day for myself and my father. It's going to be an exciting one this year because we've got the returning champion, Captain Jonathan Regard. He's been on form this season. He's been doing a couple of tours and, well, from what my sources can say, he is in fine form. Well, I saw his bintering just the other week it was immaculate the bintering that's already in the bag his swaying however that's been on the up and up that was his one weakness two years ago however he's back now and his swaying is beautiful that is very encouraging to hear but is there going to be any sort of challenge do you think we have priscilla winton binton and if i'm being honest with you possibly not really much of a contender but definitely one to keep an eye on a couple of years and she'll be way up there she may not win the overall event but she might pick up the crinting badge it's funny you should mention crinting because one of the outsiders in this contest is Kenny Oxley, very much the minor leagues he's been working. However, his crinting is, from one of my sources, bloody good. I think that says everything you need to know about Ken Oxley. He is not your usual Le Cruffs performer. Definitely not, no. This is a new breed. He is ruffling a lot of feathers, or some people even challenging his right to be there at all, doubting whether he has actually got the 4% dog gene that you need in order to be allowed to qualify for the Le Cruffs tournament. There has been some controversy about whether he's actually got dog gene or not. They are running tests on him at the moment, but if they come back clean, then he is going to Le Cruffs, and I think he's, well, He's going to make a big splash. Well, yes, and we all saw that slightly irreverent video of him on YouTube where he was making a big splash on that tree with one leg raised up to cast aspersions and all those dog gene doubters. He's quite the character. He's something, all right. Well, we all wait with bated breath to see how this year's La Cruffs unfolds. Thank you very much, Wolf, and we will be hearing from you again soon. Thanks, Lloyd. Okay, the smoke from the generator has now turned black. Gary is giving me the wind-up sound and we're beginning to lose our signal, so I guess that's the end of another show. Be sure to keep up the pedalling so that your audio receivers are ready and charged for the next show. And that's about all for this week. Oh, I nearly forgot about this week's permits. Sectors A and have 30-mile travel permits. B and F have shopping permits for Monday, Wednesday and Thursday, and C and D can collect their oxygen rations daily between 2pm and 3pm. Hope you wrote all that down, because any infringements will cost you a limb. Cheerio, and until next time, may all your brews be strong, may all your puddings be fettled, and may all your swamp mongrels be radiation free. Tara. Communications have been severely disrupted. Make sure you have food, water, and a battery-powered radio with you. This is not a test. Okay, hello. If you're still listening, you've reached the end of the very first episode, so thanks very much for making it all the way through. 
I'm Noel Curry, the guy who put all this together. And on this episode, uh, you also heard Adam Martin, Chris Lum and Josh Wyatt. And we're all uh, improvisers. We're in a group in Leeds in UK, in England, called Super Trooper Improv. So if you're in the area, please do look us up and check us out. Links to where you can find us will be in the description, along with links to any other things that our guests are involved with. If you want to get involved yourself, you can. If you're an improviser in Leeds or near enough to Leeds to get to it, get in touch with me and I'll see if I can get you on the show. If you're a bit too far away to travel into our studio, aka a room in my house, then you, you can still get involved. Just send us in a fake ad or trailer like what you just heard in our show. And if I like it, I'll stick it on the show and I might even send you something. Uh, I don't have things to send out at the minute, but who knows, I may do at some point in the future. So the plan is to stick one of these out every month, uh, but I only get around to doing this in my very limited spare time. So I'm not promising that I'm going to stick to that schedule. And with that in mind, uh, can I please just ask that you don't like or subscribe because the more people that do that, the more time I'm going to have to spend on making this sound actually good. So uh, that would be appreciated. And uh, for the love of God, don't rate and review it. That would be disastrous unless you hate me, you know, rate and review, share on Twitter, Facebook and all that. But if you're a friend of mine, you know what to do. Just leave well enough alone. Thanks very much again for listening and we'll be back again soon. The glorious free republic of Yorkshire radio show.